Renowned American gun maker Smith & Wesson has been making guns in Springfield, Massachusetts since the mid-1800s. They've been doing it in this facility since the mid-1900s. This week on American Rifleman Television, it's all about revolvers, so let's step inside and see how they're made. Smith & Wesson has a long, storied heritage in revolver making. From the first 38 s and Special cartridges, all the way through the Smith & Wesson Model 10, up to today's modern Smith & Wesson 500 X-Frame revolvers, which really pushed the limits of, you know, how large of a, of a caliber you can have in a revolver platform. So I think there's a lot to be said for revolvers in modern day concealed carry personal protection lifestyle that shouldn't be discounted. Today's modern Smith & Wesson revolver incorporates many of the traditional firearms manufacturing processes combined with today's most modern uh, manufacturing and assembly and quality control processes in the revolver. Raw forgings make the, the frame of the revolver all the way to the modern CNC equipment making the barrels uh, of the revolver and then putting it all together with the handiwork of our skilled assemblers uh, assembling the revolver into its uh, final configuration. Quality is paramount at Smith & Wesson and at each stage of the process that quality is checked to ensure that not only is the final product pass all of our quality inspections, but each individual part does as well. So there's a variety of different quality checks that happen during the manufacturing and assembly process to ensure that that product that's getting to our consumer is in tip-top shape. So Jan, now that we've seen how these revolvers are made, we've got kind of a nice sampling in front of us, ranging from the uh, J frames all the way up to the X and Z frames. Uh, so why don't we run through kind of the, the features, because this is a pretty good spread, a pretty good sampling of the current Smith & Wesson revolver catalog. And I think I'd like to start with what is probably one of the most common, especially when you think about how concealed carry driven our market is today. Probably one of the most common options out there is a little J frame. Right, Joe. So um, this is our J-frame line, and probably a, a good representation of that small concealable personal protection revolver right. is the Model 642 that I have here. So this is a hammerless design, double action only, uh, synthetic rubber grip, five shot, 38 special, rated to 38 plus P. Right, and uh, really nothing you don't need on here. This is down to the nitty gritty pretty much in terms of uh, features, but all utility. And, and the beauty and simplicity of a, of a revolver is its simplicity. Right. From what is maybe being very popularly carried today, we can also take a look at a new entry to the Classics line, uh, the Model 19, which right. was, <laughs> really did have its heyday in terms of... Uh, What's uh, old uh, is new again. A, exactly. Yeah. And yep. uh, here again we have, uh, this one's in 357, but what are some of the features and what makes it a, a classic model? So the, the Model 19 uh, is a classic, was a, was a standard duty issue, uh, 38 357 revolver um, for, for law enforcement. And we brought it back uh, yeah. in the classic series. So it, it still has the same beautiful blue finish, nice luster bluing, uh, right. walnut stock, um, chambering uh, up to six rounds of 357 Magnum. Uh, however, there are some, uh, some new elements of uh, production or design that went into the 19 to bring it up to, to, to modern day. Um, we, we do have a, a two-piece barrel. Uh, assembly on this and a ball detent lockup uh, for extra strength on, right. the, on the frame. So here we have kind of that that mid-size, mid-weight and still just a lot of utility in that 357 Magnum. Uh, exactly, it's uh, it's in our K frame so right. one step up into the medium size versus the small size of the J frame. And then we also have a representation here of the uh, L frames. Very, very popular, available in different barrel lengths. Uh, this one here is all stainless steel construction. And where the L frames were traditionally always six rounds, this is a plus model. So in the same size gun, right. we have seven rounds of 357 Magnum. And that's been nice to see in the revolver category that you know using uh, different construction methods, using uh, different designs like the ball detent, like better material in the cylinders, uh, you no longer need such large walls around the cartridges, you can get that same strength in smaller material, meaning 
eventually you can add another round. Yeah, exactly. So what, what you saw earlier in the Ford shop is really the, the heart of the revolver where we're starting off with that strong, powerful, durable, right. raw forging frame. So that enables us to, to get the, the power that you will in the different sizes of revolvers with all different materials from aluminum to scandium to stainless steel. There's still a lot of personal touch that goes into the manufacture of a revolver here at Smith & Wesson. Although we, we have very sophisticated CNC equipment to, to machine to the tightest tolerances, the barrel and the cylinder, when you put it all together uh, and you want to polish and blend the surfaces of the side plate and the cylinder and the frame into a beautiful you know, finish, luster, all the mating parts together, that's all still done by, by hand to exacting standards. And when it comes to the, the final assembly of, of the revolver, making sure that you know, all the parts are in the revolver, they, they fit, they function, you know, just show some of that real handiwork that, that goes into each and every revolver manufactured here at Smith & Wesson. All right, Jan, now that we kind of took a look at some of the, the small and medium uh, frame revolvers, now we're getting into the big boys here, and we can start uh, right here with a impressive in chambering, but equally impressive in how lightweight this is. Uh, this is one of the end frames. That, that's an end frame and really designed to be as lightweight as possible right. so you can carry this into the field. It's chambered in 44 Magnum. This particular revolver is the Model 329 and to, to make it super lightweight, 25 ounces in a 44 Magnum, we, we used a titanium cylinder for yeah. that extra savings of a couple of ounces, a scandium alloy high strength frame, so it's an alloy of, of aluminum, but for high strength for 44 Magnum, and um, made a real nice lightweight uh, package here. Yeah, it's got great sights on it as well, and of course that really powerful 44 mag chambering. May not be a favorite at the range, but for that right. guy who needs to pack it through bear country over a lot of miles, right. th those weight savings are really going to add up. Exactly. Uh, and moving on from there, we can look at a, well we'll kind of skip out of alphabetical order here, and maybe move on to the Z-frame here, which is a really interesting design, um, and one that's I know has been very popular with some people, and that's the, that's the Governor. Um, yeah, uh, that's its name, uh, Smith & Wesson Governor. And uh, what's really unique about this revolver uh, is its additional chambering. Right. So not only do you have the, the 410 two and a half inch shot shell and 45 long coal chambering, you have 45 ACP. Right, and basically from the Z frames, we actually move up yet again uh, to the X frame. And here we have a 460 VXR, and this is a performance center model, I believe. Right, so in our uh, X frame, extra large uh, right. frame series, which we introduced a few years back in 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum right. and 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. So uh, you could say that uh, from a production revolver standpoint, uh, they have the highest muzzle energy in a handgun yeah. in the 500 and the highest velocity in a handgun with the 460 uh, Smith & Wesson Magnum uh, cartridge. Right, so it's really nice to see that in this age of polymer pistols of all different shapes and sizes, Smith & Wesson is still committed to the revolver game as well. And as we can see just from the sampling here, everything from your small J frame up to that extra large X frame, uh, basically to meet any need. So alongside the Smith & Wesson line of revolvers, we also have the Performance Center. So Performance Center will take a Smith & Wesson revolver and incorporate a bunch of custom features into that gun, such as a tuned action, tuned trigger, uh, over-travel stops, specialized sights, integrated rails, and really make that revolver custom built for a specific purpose, whether it be for competition, for handgun hunting, or for concealed carry. Alongside that, we also have a Smith & Wesson engraving shop, which will do full custom engraving, very, very fine detail on revolvers, um, which is something that you don't see every day today. Revolvers still play a very important part under the Smith & Wesson brand, uh, true to this day. 
And looking back, it's really the whole heritage and history of Smith & Wesson's and today's legacy of being the most trusted brand in firearms uh, really started back in 1852 right through to present day.